What's up, y'all? My name is Jordan. Back again like I never left. Hope all is well. We are pretty much done with 2022. Really insane to think about. It is time for me to start doing my year-end list. Now, I at first wasn't going to make a separate video strictly for this, but the more I thought about it and the more that I'm kind of heading into a different direction as far as content creating goes, I decided, you know what? I'll have my top 50 albums of the year, but let me also shine a light on some albums that I really enjoyed, some albums that if I were to make a 100 best albums of the year list, these albums would definitely be on there just in no order. And also in the same video, in the same breath, let me also add in some EPs I really enjoyed. And I'm just going to start off with a genre that, you know, I feel like gets a lot of hate or not even so much as hate, but, you know, is always said it's dead, right? I think if you've been keeping up with the news, Diddy had said R&B is dead couldn't be you know further than the truth i get what he was trying to say from a mainstream point of view but there was a lot i mean a lot of great r&b projects that they dropped this year so i'm just going to name a few at least about 15 close to 20 projects that i've enjoyed and you should definitely check out as well first off is Nigel's album don't say i didn't warn you dylan sinclair is no longer in the suburbs i think if you've heard this you know the deluxe also compliments it as well i really hope i'm saying his name right because he's also from the base so i don't want to disrespect him but Aluje with Circumvent, Sam Henshaw with Untidy Soul. This is somebody who I believe is from overseas also, so this album didn't get a lot of shine, so I think I'm the one that's going to give it some shine and definitely some new music for y'all to listen to. Also, there's this new artist or a newer artist, Eli Derby, with his project Left on Red, Pink Sweats with Pink Moon, Babyface with Girls Night Out, and you know, typically I'm not the biggest fan of compilation albums, but I think the idea that Babyface went forward to just have female R&B artists was a nice move. Now, I'm going to be taking it back with this one, but the Isley Brothers make me say it again, girl. This may not be everyone's favorite album, but you know what? I got to put a light on some legends that, you know, are still with us, right? It's not every day that we have artists who are in their 80s still putting out music. I know some may have questions about the features, whether it's 2 Chains, Rick Ross, Quavo, Takeoff, Beyonce. It was music that I enjoyed. It was a nice album. Phony people finally put out their new album, Euphonious. I really was trying to figure out when this album was going to come out. Ever since effing around with Megan Thee Stallion was wondering when that album was going to come out and it finally did was very happy with the results. Mary J. Blige with Good Morning Gorgeous. She's nominated for Album of the Year at the Grammys, so that's helping that that's giving the album some recognition. But I think she's going to be taking a break from music. I heard that she was going to be doing a talk show pretty soon. Even with her taking a break, this was, to me, her best work in a while, right? I, I heard somebody say, like, oh, this is her trying to capture that same sound from her past albums, and it just makes me want to listen to those past albums. But, I mean, it's all opinion, and I can respect it. But I disagree with it just because I found myself enjoying this album more than her other past few works this past decade at least. Just some few other R&B projects that I loved a lot were Sergio Before It's Too Late, Destin Conrad with Satin, and this is definitely in the experimental R&B route but Sudan Archives with Natural Brown Prom Queen. So if you've ever heard any of these albums before, I definitely think you should give these a listen, but then also just realize these were the R&B albums that I enjoyed a lot and should definitely be given some recognition. Just going to also shout out this one jazz album, Adam Blackstone's Legacy. This not only has features with Jasmine Sullivan, who has my favorite song on here, but then also Chadwick Boseman's wife has a beautiful tribute track for him. As far as albums that are not R&B, just kind of throwing out ones that are of a different genre, I wanted to throw out some names of these projects. Rina Sawayama's Hold the Girl. Not going to lie. It wasn't a disappointment, it just for me wasn't as good as Sawayama I thought was not only one of my favorite albums of 2020, but it was a much more superior album, and that's no disrespect to Rena herself, but I much, much prefer that album herself titled pretty much Sawayama over Hold the Girl. That was a fun record, a nice record. Same with even Kilo Kishes. That's a tongue twister. Kilo Kish, Kilo Kishes. Kilo Kishes, American Girl. This is definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of like alternative kind of music. Going into like the rock route is Mitski's Laurel Hell. It's kind of on me for not really peeping out a lot of rock music this year, but if I had to choose a rock release that I enjoyed a lot, it was Mitski's latest project. But speaking of rock music, Coping Mechanism by Willow was a really nice rock album. I liked that she, or at least these past couple of projects, has really devoted her sound, her style towards rock music. I see a bright future with her doing that. It was a few spots away from getting to my top 50, but I had to, you know, save that for the albums that will be in my top 50. And while this isn't alternative, this is just, you know, I, I like to think of it as like genreless music is Toby Lou's Non Perishable. 
been listening to Toby Lou for a minute. One of my cousins had told me about him. He delivered with this project. So that was it for some albums that I really enjoyed a lot in the R&B, pop, jazz category. Now let's get into rap. It was my most streamed genre of the year for on my Spotify wrapped rap, underground rap. And starting off with underground, Ransom's No Rest for the Wicked. Ransom has really been creeping up in one of my favorite rappers just in the past decade, Boldy James and Nicholas Craven's Fair Exchange. Really nice project. Perfect time for when they dropped it in the fall going into the winter time. Speaking of, also of another underground rapper that I enjoy a lot is RJ Payne's My Life is a Movie. JR and King James's Weather Report 2 and JR's A Shadow in the Shade 2. He is somebody who I discovered last year, like at least the beginning of last year during when it was still kind of like a pandemic kind of time. And I saw on Twitter, shout out to Check the Rhyme on Twitter, he was posting about Hoop Dreams and a couple of his other projects. Went to listen to those, was really impressed. But these two projects right here really impressed me. Next up is Gaius Rivera with There Will Be No Super Slave. Somebody else who I also saw on Twitter, like I didn't know who this was and this is why I'm dedicating this section strictly for underground rap because this is not going to be pushed and talked about as much. Also, Nito's For The Soul. This is an album that I'm glad I got to listen to, glad I got to interview him and this is new talent that should be talked about more. So Nito's For The Soul was great. Black Star's No Fear Of Time. Not an album that was easy for everybody to listen to, mostly because you had to subscribe to like that one podcast channel. I think it's Luminary. Yeah, the one subscription-based service that has Dave Chappelle and Black Stars podcast on there. So not everyone's going to be able to hear this album. However, if you are able to, definitely check it out. You know, it's, it was their first project in over 20 years, Mad Lib on all the production. They recently performed some of the album on SNL. It does all the right things for me. Most Def and Talib Kweli are some of my favorite rappers. Most Def more so but this proves again that in the ages that they're at what pushing up on 50 damn near they haven't lost touch of what they did 20 years ago well over that two other projects though are Elzai's Zeitgeist. Elzai is somebody ever since Lead Poison, ever since he was even a part of Slum Village, like he's never lost touch also. So out of anybody who's come from Detroit, he's definitely one of my favorite rappers from there. And this is an album that was close to my top 50. So some who are underground rap fans may be shocked by this, but you know what? It didn't make it on my list, but it was still good enough for me to mention it. And that is Billy Wood's latest album, Ethiopes. Don't have much more to say about that, except I enjoyed the album he put out last year. I preferred Arm & Hammer more over this album, but then again, still a good album regardless. Now, this isn't an underground artist, but this is somebody who is definitely deserving of just being mentioned. Just because, you know what? They passed away six years ago, and to this day, it's still very sad to mention, but Five Dog with Forever. I know a lot of people like to mention Mac Miller Circles. A lot of people like to mention Don Illuminati by Tupac. And while I'm not saying this album is up there with those projects, it is still a very well-made album considering what happened, how his family and his estate handled just the release of it all. Makes me wish, you know, Five Dog was still with us. Rest in peace once again. But it definitely holds that spirit of how he was capable of just putting out great projects. Now, that kind of makes me transition into albums made by bigger names. So, starting off, you know, I mentioned an OG just recently with Five Dog. Rest in peace once again. But I also enjoyed Method Man's The Meth Lab 3. Yeah, I don't know why not that many people were talking about this one. I understand that the game is different when it comes to rappers who are in their 50s. This was to me an album that shocked me like how good it was method man's always been one of my favorites from the wu-tang clan so it shouldn't have been so much of a shock but i was shocked with how good it just was speaking of snoop dogg's back on death row now snoop dogg and me and his like music it's kind of like a funny relationship because to me before this album my favorite album at least from the 2010s by him was bush the album he made with pharrell there wasn't really much done wrong on this album and it kind of captures like that spirit of how i've always just you know Thought about Snoop Dogg with like his raps and his how he approaches music and just speeding through a few names. This is gonna be fun to do, but here we go. Like Kelly 47, Shape Up, Metro Boomin, Heroes and Villains, Earth Gang, Ghetto Gods, Currency and the Alchemist Continuance, Saba, Few Good Things, Buddy, Super Ghetto, La Russell, For What It's Worth, Flo Millie, You Still Here Ho, Kamaya, Divine Timon, Che Noir's The Last Remnants, Miji Darko's Gothic Luxury, Kenny Beats with Louie, Kenny Mason, Rough, Domo Genesis, and Evidence, Intros, Outros, and Interludes. Now these last three, they were so close to being in my top 50, like so close. And I know some who see my top 50 might be mad that these didn't make it on here, or maybe not, right? But let me start off with this one, Rome Streets, Kiss the Ring. As far as Griselda releases go, this was one of my favorites. However, 
just because of what's in my top 50 didn't make it it would probably would be at like maybe number 51 maybe yeah 51 would probably be the right number i personally just didn't put it on here just because i didn't i need to sit with it longer but it's still a great album nevertheless next up also that some might be shocked by just because of my fandom with his music in the past and that would be logic's vinyl days now to be fair this to me was my favorite logic release ever since no pressure just because bobby tarantino 3 i wasn't really messing with that one album that was pretty much like a tribute to mf doom wasn't really messing with that much the peanuts tapes that he dropped this year instrumentals right those were cool but the ones that really stand out with as much music as logic puts out right vinyl days does stand out as a really nice project but the skits definitely could have been taken off honestly i mean i get it logic's the biracial rapper right peace love positivity he's corny this and that i feel like this album kind of proves as to why he was one of my favorites, at least in the past decade. Yeah, I said it. He was one of my favorites and a lot of people's favorites out there. And it wouldn't shock me and I wouldn't be mad if his album does make it in a lot of people's top 50 list. It's just that I personally do enjoy some of Logic's older works. But Vinyl Days, I think, would be close to like maybe a 52 spot on my list if I was doing the top 100 albums of the year. Finally, an album that I'm... I'm shocked myself. I didn't put it on the list, but I still want to give them a shout out just because, you know, their albums in the past never made it to an honorable mentions or even my top 50 list. So you know who that is? It is AG Club with Imposter Syndrome. I said in, in my little review for it that this to me is their best work. Later on in this decade, they will be more known about. And, you know, as time goes on, right? I mean, if they do get more known about, great. If they have the audience they just have right now, still great this album at least proves why they have the career they have they have the movement they have they have the songs they have from this album just all summed up right here definitely had some of my favorite music videos this album was a moment and i know some might be thinking so why didn't you put in your top 50 this is where it gets kind of difficult just explaining why i didn't put these albums in the top 50 but in general like i said if i was doing a top 100 albums list all these albums would be on here at least i'm shouting these albums out right i mean i think i'm doing like a good job with that so those are all the albums that you know i'm giving an honorable mention and would have been maybe in the, like a top 100 albums list of 2022 now get ready you know i'm not going to give an explanation but i'm just going to run through a lot of these eps whether they're r&b or rap a lot of eps that left a lasting impact on me so just going to speed through it joyce rice motive oogie monologues blood orange four songs gabrielle b unscripted Alex Vaughn, The Hurt Book, Nippa, Not a Statistic, Samaria, Shout Out to the Bay with Didn't Start With You, Flo, The Lead, Aunt Clemens, Foreplay, Levin Kelly with Lay It Rain, Dochi, She, Her, Black Bitch, Ransom and Mare, This Life Made Me, DJ Premier, Hip Hop 50, Volume 1, IDK and Katrinata, Simple, Your Old Rug, Yowd Wave. So I didn't want to make a separate video for my EPs just because I feel like that's going to take more editing <laughs> with me trying to explain my favorite EPs, but... When it comes down to it, that is my favorite music of 2022 as far as honorable mentions go with different genres and rap and R&B and my favorite EPs. That was it for just me talking about what I enjoyed a lot in 2022 that didn't quite make it into my top 50 list. So that's it, y'all. How did y'all feel about me doing this this way for an honorable mentions and best EPs? Do you like some of these projects? Do you not like some of these projects? Whatever y'all think, let me know in the comments down below. Like the video. Thank y'all so much for watching. As always, are the best. Look forward to what more I got coming soon, including my top 50 albums of the year. So be on the lookout for that. And until next time, I'll see y'all later.